Support the troops! Bring them home. You're watching Smart Remarks. So I get this email from one of my regular right-wing correspondents who says, Hey, why don't you write about this? Because you hate America, you hate freedom, it's an outrage! And it was one of these right-wing email forwards. You see these things all the time. It's some story about a bunch of servicemen and women in uniform walking through an airport, and all these people in the airport get up to applaud them. It's very nice, very heartwarming, very touching if it's actually true. Uh, but it seems to me that yeah, it illustrates something that's happened in this country, the fact that we've come almost 180 degrees from where we were 30 or 40 years ago. As any conservative will tell you, there was a time when Americans didn't support the troops. There's all these stories, again, whether they're actually true or not, of people coming home from Vietnam, soldiers coming home and being greeted coldly, being spat upon, being called baby killers, whatever it is. But as I said, we've turned around completely since then, uh, where everyone always and continually thanks the troops. It's almost compulsory. It's almost become institutionalized now. You might have seen an ad, I think it's by American Airlines, uh, where we have a pilot sp uh, supporting the troops saying thank you as, as the uniformed serviceman leaves the plane. All this is great, all this is appropriate, all this fine, although in the back of my mind it makes me a little uneasy because I think it sets the stage for a possible eventual coup in a country that deifies the military this way. It'd be real easy for the military to take over. But it also gets me to thinking about the whole idea of supporting the troops in the first place. We say we support the troops, but what does this mean? If you're about to be sent to Afghanistan and maybe die for a cause that hasn't really been articulated to the country, what's more supportive? People patting you on the back and wanting to shake your hand and saying thank you, or if those people were to say, wait, why are we sending this guy to Afghanistan in the first place? We're at a very weird and dangerous place as a country where we support uh, the troops, but we don't really think about the wars that we go to send them to fight. Yes, we'll send you off to fight and maybe die in some country we couldn't possibly locate on a map because there's people there who hate our freedom, even though they might not be actual threats to us, even though our presence there might actually hurt more than it helps, we're going to rip you away from your ha family and uh, ship you off on a long tour of duty in some godforsaken hellhole for a, a cause we can't really articulate. But don't worry, we support you. Thank you for your service. It's to the everlasting credit of our men and women in the military that they fulfill their duty and go where our government tells them to go. But it's to the everlasting shame of the rest of us that we don't question our government as to whether it's really necessary to send them to these places. This makes it very easy for governments to start wars when they know the citizens won't question the war itself and are insistent upon supporting the troops and then see those who don't support the war as not supporting the troops. This is a recipe for endless war. It's a recipe for imperial out overreach and it's manifestly unfair to the troops themselves. They are willing to sacrifice and that is indeed noble but it's incumbent upon the rest of us to make sure they're only called upon to sacrifice for the right reasons.